there and welcome to the third episode of Paint with a Pint. I am your instructor Janet Hockman and in today's episode we are going to be painting this awesome autumn landscape. The materials that you need for this episode are in the description for the video below, but to briefly go over what you will need, you will need a 16 by 20 inch standard size pre-prepped canvas or whatever size you prefer, an easel for painting on, you will need two palettes. The first palette of paint, we are going to be using these colors for our background. So everything in the sky and the ground, white, primary blue, phthalo green, green oxide, and raw sienna is what we're going to need for our background colors. That will be the first half of the painting. The second half of the painting, I'm going to be using my warm colors. So these will be used for the tree as well as the leaves. I am using black, burnt sienna, raw sienna, yellow, orange, and red. So that will come in the second half of the painting. You will also need some paper towels, a cup for rinsing out your brushes, four different size brushes, a one inch, three quarters, half inch, and a quarter inch. And I'd like to mention that if you have any small or tiny brushes laying around, that you wanted to play around with, this is a great episode for experimenting with those. Whenever we get to the leaves at the very end of the painting, you're going to have some fun with these. So if you have them, great. If not, it's totally optional. You will also need a pencil and a cup. We are going to be using these two items for tracing out the circle for the moon or some say sun in the sky. So make sure that you have those handy. A blow dryer is also something that is optional, but might be something that you might want to have around because it makes the steps in between the painting process much easier. And an apron to protect your clothing or just wear clothes that you don't mind getting paint on because if acrylic paint gets on your clothes and it dries, it does stain. So just keep that in mind. And of course, going with our paint with a pint theme, a pint of your favorite beverage. Please use this pint as a reminder that this whole process is meant to be fun, relaxing, and enjoyable. So instead of getting all caught up in the details of everything, just enjoy the process. And with all of that said, let's paint with a pint. Cheers. So. To begin this painting process, we are going to take our pencil and our cup. There are two circular sides to this. So if you want to have a larger sun or moon, whichever way you see it, then use the opening of the cup. If not, then use the bottom. I'm going to go with the large side and or the large opening. Um, and in the upper right hand corner of my painting, so I'm going to play around with that till I'm happy. And once I'm happy with it, I'm going to go ahead and trace that circle onto my canvas. Okay. So I have that on there. And now I am going to dip into my largest brush and I am or I'm going to take my largest I'm going to take my largest brush and I'm going to just be taking blue and white and I'm mixing up kind of um, a lighter blue but you don't want it to be too light so if you start out with too much white just add more blue and you don't have to mix it all together on your plate um, at once you can actually use your canvas um, for mixing some of this together because you kind of want that streaky effect. So um, I'm going to start by just kind of going around my, I'm going to go with a moon. So I'm going to go around my moon um, and I'm just going in a circular motion all the way around. And I'm going to continue that circular motion throughout the entire background. And I want there to be streaks of white that blend in with the blue as I go. It will give your painting more depth and more interest, make it more interesting. 
So don't be afraid to just dip into white and let some of that streakiness out on your painting. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about, so going around the moon or the sun, whichever one you're going with, I'm going to go ahead and just start to um, outline that a little bit more closely. You can take your time when you do this. If you happen to get some of the paint inside of where you traced, don't worry about it. We're going to be coming back over it. You'll be able to cover it up. It does make the process a lot easier if you don't have any blue paint inside of that line. But if you do, it's not a big deal. We're, the beauty of painting is that you can always come back and cover those things up. So I'm just going to carefully go around where I trace. Okay, so I have around that section done, but what about all of this? So I'm going to just take my um, brush and I'm going to just kind of draw out a wavy line that goes from the bottom left hand corner and makes, it way, makes its way down, or the bottom left hand side of the canvas, and it makes its way down to the bottom right hand corner. That's going to be where we place the grass. So I'm just marking that out for myself. Now everything else above that line, I want to be blue. So it can be streaky blue throughout. Um, as you move away from the sun or the moon, the sky can get darker. Don't forget to paint your sides, the top of the canvas, uh, because if you want to hang this up on the wall and you don't have a frame when you're all done, it's a nice touch um, to just get it up there on display. So I'm also going to paint the sides of my canvas and the top as well. So what you're worrying about right now is just getting all of this white part above this line filled in with blue, sky blue. You can make it streaky and it can get darker as you move away from the light source. I'm gonna give you some time to go ahead and get that filled in. And when we're done, we will work on the grass. my sky painted. I've added that streaky effect with the white and the blue to give it some movement. I'm now going to move on to the grass. And for the grass, I have phthalo green, green oxide, and raw sienna on my plate. So I'm going to mix up my own shade of green. I'm going to dip into a little bit of phthalo green, green oxide, mix that together, and then add in a little bit of raw sienna. Once I get a color that I'm about happy with, I'm going to go ahead and overlap the bottom of the sky just a little bit because you don't want the white of the canvas to show through. So I'm going to take that color that is on my brush that I mixed up and I'm just going to draw an imperfect kind of wavy sloping line down to the bottom right corner. And including my sides, I want to go ahead and paint everything below that line, this shade of green that I have mixed up. You can also um, flip your canvas upside down in order to paint the bottom of the canvas, something that um, a lot of people tend to forget about, but it does look nice whenever you hang it on the wall without a frame. So um, after you have this all painted, go ahead and flip it over, paint the bottom of the canvas, um, we're going to get all of that grass green in there before we move on to painting your sun or moon, whichever creative way you see it. All right, so now we have the sky and the ground covered with paint. It's ready to go. Um, before we move on to the tree, I want to take care of getting this all painted in. So I'm going to move down to my half inch brush 
And I'm also going to move on to my second palette. So I have a little bit of white on that second palette and I have some yellow. I'm going to mix up a very, very, very light yellow. And that's what I'm going to use to paint in the moon or sun. Again, I want you to be creative. I've heard but people say both. For mine, I kind of see it as a moon. I don't know why, but I do. So it's just kind of what I'm sticking with. Um, but you really want to take your time and be careful with this part. I do want to give you just a little hint. Let's say you did start out with the larger side when you traced the open side of your cup and it's starting to not look like a circle so much on your canvas. You can flip the cup over and use the bottom half and retrace a circle so you've eliminated any mistakes that you've made. You're just going to make a smaller um, light source. So that is an option I just wanted to let you know about. There's absolutely nothing wrong with going a little bit smaller than maybe what you started with. And this is probably going to take two coats. So I'm going to carefully take my time getting this filled in. I'm going to use my blow dryer to let the first layer dry and then I'm going to um, do a second coat so that any imperfections that I might have left while I was painting my sky will be covered up with that second, maybe even a touch up with a third coat. So take your time with this step. Um, I'm going to let you get that filled in and when we come back, we're going to work on the tree. Our entire background is complete so it's time to move on to the main subject of our painting which is our tree with autumn leaves so we are going to start with the tree trunk and move our way up to the branches using a pencil is a good idea to just lightly sketch out the shape of the tree and the branches before you commit to it with your paint and paintbrush so I'm just going to lightly sketch out where I'm going to place the tree to help me visualize um, the size and the shape as I move up. And I'm going to start in the bottom left hand corner. I want to be about two to three inch, two to three fingers away from the edge of my canvas. So in about that area, that is where I would start sketching the tree trunk. And then down on the other side, you can think about three to four fingers width, depending on how wide you want the tree to be. Let's just make a mark there. And then as I move upwards, I'm going, the tree trunk is going to get thinner and thinner. So I'm just going to lightly sketch that out. It's going to be hard for you to see from where you're at right now, but hopefully um, in the other camera angle, you'll be able to see um, some of these lines. And if not, don't worry, because once I start painting it, you're really going to see the shape that I'm going for um, using the example that I created in 2016. Okay, once I get to about halfway up my canvas, that's where I'm going to start some of my branches. Not all of my branches, but some. So I want a branch to just kind of go off on its own in a whimsical way this way. And then I'll go up a little bit further and I want another branch to kind of follow its way. Okay, and then I'll go up a little bit further and now I'm just going to kind of have fun and play with this part. This is where you really get to be creative. So just kind of let the branches go wherever you would like them to go. Just kind of get yourself a visual, let them kind of break free as you move up towards the top of your canvas.
and my branches are kind of moving towards the light. So um, I'm kind of keeping them a little bit further away. Most of it's going on or moving towards um, my moon, so, or my sun. <laughs> kind of the running joke of this episode. Okay, now that I kind of have it planned out, I'm um, happy with where I'm going to go with it. I'm going to now, I'm going to go back to the brush that I was using um, for my moon. And I'm going to rinse that out and dry it off. So I'm just drying this off. And I've moved on to my second palette. So um, warm colors going on here. I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of black. Remember, black goes, a little bit of black goes a long way, so I don't need a whole lot. And once I have a little bit of that on my brush, I can start to outline the tree trunk with my brush and kind of get a visual for where that's all going to go. And now I'm just starting to sketch out those branches. So um, I'm kind of working on the skeleton of the tree and then in a minute I'll take some time to really fill it in and give it some detail. Okay, this is the part now where I want to start to fill in the um, tree trunk. So I'm just going to get a base coat on it first. So I'm going to give you some time to just get a base coat and then I'll come back and show you how to add some texture and some detail to the bark. in we have the branches laid out where we'd like them to go now it's time to just add a second layer to add some texture and detail to the bark so using the same brush I'm going to um, dip into my raw sienna as well and just mix up a really kind of light brown and with the same colors that I was mixing before 
And now, just in a, a vertical motion, kind of up and down, I'm just going to add kind of like a streaky effect to the bark. So it's, it's a second coat, but a very, very light second coat. So I'm just kind of moving my brush up and down. And I want to do that throughout. I don't have to worry so much about the detail on the brush it, or on the branches because we're going to be covering the majority of the branches up with leaves. So you don't have to worry about that too much. What I mainly want you to focus on is just adding a second coat or a second light layer um, of light brown over top of the tree trunk just to give it some depth, some texture, and a little bit make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to give you some time to go ahead and do that. When we come back, we're going to touch up a little bit around the base of the trunk. And then it's going to be time to move on to the last part and probably the most fun part of this painting, which is adding autumn leaves throughout the canvas. Now that we've added some texture to the bark of the tree, I'm going to rinse out this same brush. I don't need the brown on it anymore. And I'm actually going to bounce back to my first palette because I want a little bit of this green that we mixed up for the grass. So I'm going to dry this off. And going back to that color I mixed up earlier, I don't need a whole lot of it, just a little bit. I want to add just a little bit of texture to the bottom of the tree to make it look like the grass is kind of growing up over the bottom of the tree trunk. So again, you don't need a whole lot, but I just want to add that effect to the bottom here. for the last step in our painting. So I want to make sure that we have everything dry. So I'm going to give you a moment to make sure that everything on your canvas is completely dry before we move on to the leaves. So, and I think probably the most fun and important part of our autumn landscape. So rinse out your brush, move on to your quarter inch brush and make sure that for our next step, you have any little brushes around the house um, that you'd like to experiment with handy. And when we come back, we're painting leaves. All right, you guys, it's time for the last step and the most fun. So relax, drink your pint, and have a good time and just enjoy this process. We're going to be doing this with layers of paint. So I'm going to start with my darkest and work my way to the lightest. Darkest being the red. Then I'm going to do orange and then I'm going to do yellow. And it's okay if along the process some of this mixes together. So my quarter inch brush, or if you want to experiment with your tiny little brushes you have at home, go for it. With this step, I'm literally just going to be making dots all over my branches. So starting with my branches. And you'll notice in the painting that the leaves are kind of moving towards our moon or sun and uh, kind of going down towards the right hand side of our canvas, which is creating a lot of movement. So, you know, in, in autumn, during the fall, it's uh, very windy, kind of chilly and crisp. So you want to make sure um, that we, we create that movement on our surface of our canvas. So I'm going to start with red and I want you to take your time and just build up that red paint all over. It doesn't really matter what your leaves look like. Some might be small, some might be big, but take your time. Let's get a coat of paint or I'm sorry, a layer of these leaves throughout and then we're going to move to orange. So I'm going to paint leaves all throughout these branches and I'm going to allow them to kind of fall to the grass and don't forget to place some down on the grass as well because they are falling down to the ground. So we want to include those throughout the bottom as well and really have fun with it. So for right now we're just working on red. When we come back we're moving on to orange.
Okay, now that we have some of the red leaves kind of laid out and planned out on our tree, we're gonna move on to orange. I'm not going to clean out my brush. I'm gonna let the red mix in with it. And now I'm going to do the same step that I did with red, but now using orange, I'm just gonna go all over the same path of the same pattern that I did with red. Now we have some red leaves, orange leaves. It's time to start adding some yellow leaves. And I highly encourage you to mix a little bit of white um, with the yellow, not too much, but just a little bit. And allow the orange and the red to mix in and start adding in that lighter yellow throughout. And really have some fun with this. Um, once you get a layer of yellow, then you can go back in with orange, you can go back in with red, you can play around. Um, the point is that we really want to fill in this, the main uh, part of the tree around the branches. We want that to be full of color. And don't forget to add some of that down below as well to just kind of make it all work together. So I'm going to give you some time to get the yellow in there, take your time, fill it in, have some fun. Now that we have our beautiful autumn leaves all throughout our painting, that completes episode three of Paint with a Pint. I thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you liked anything about this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. You can also purchase this painting that I created for episode three today by contacting me on my website, paintwithapint.com. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you in episode four of Paint with a Pint.